In this guide, there will be a detailed overview of the thread milling toolpath strategy. We'll look at all the options in the form and show the effects of the different settings you have on the toolpaths you create. So what is thread milling? This toolpath strategy enables you to machine internal threads to create a hole that you can screw a threaded bolt into. It also allows you to create the external threads for the bolt. The software achieves this using specialist tools and a helical toolpath. To get started with this guide, we are going to open up a pre-existing file. So if we go over here to open existing file and navigate over to our tutorials folder, you're going to see a file called thread milling guide example number one dot CRV. Let's select that and then click open. Now, before we get too much into what's going on here, we should take a look at the actual thread milling toolpath. So let's jump over to our toolpath tab and we'll quickly have a look at our material setup. So currently right now, our thickness of our material is going to be 40 millimeters. Our XY datums in the bottom left, we'll be zeroing off our material surface and our rapid Z gaps and home position are safe and appropriate for our machine. So we're just going to click OK. And let's go in and have a look at the thread milling toolpath. Before we take a look at any examples, I'm going to walk you through each section in the form, and then we'll look back at each part in a little more detail with some examples. The first section we have here is where we specify the cutting depths, choosing where we start from and the maximum depth we want to cut to. You'll notice that we are also displayed the thread length value. This shows us how much of the cut has full threads, and this is grayed out as this is for information purposes and is calculated from the tool you are using and the max depth you have entered above. We'll look at this again shortly. In this next section, we can go ahead and choose the tool that we would like to use to cut this toolpath with. Right now we have one already chosen. If we wanted to temporarily edit the parameters for this tool for this toolpath, we could just click edit. For now, let's go have a look at what tools we have available for threaded toolpaths. Let's just click select. Now there are two different types of tools that you can use to cut threads with. There's a multi-thread tool or a single thread tool. With a single thread tool, you cut each thread one at a time. And with a multi-thread tool, you cut all your threads in one go. There are a number of advantages and disadvantages for using either of these. For instance, a single point tool provides us with more flexibility when it comes to threads that can be cut, where you can vary the depth in cuts to allow threads of different pitches to be produced. Single thread tools, though, do take a little bit longer to cut because they're only using one cutting edge. Now, when it comes to a multi-thread tool, it will cut all the threads in one single rotation. For now, let's just go ahead and select the single thread tool and go back to our form. Now that we have a tool selected, we can move on to the thread definition. The first section we see is the pitch presets. In this dropdown, you can go ahead and choose from some standard pitch presets that we have ready for you. The standards are based on the ISO metric thread standard for metric units or the universal thread standard for imperial units. Selecting one of these options will pre-populate the pitch field with the correct values. Alternatively, if you don't want to choose one from the list, you can set up a custom thread definition. The graphic on the left highlights the pitch, showing that the value is the distance between the peaks of the thread. If you're using a multi-thread tool, then the pitch field will be grayed out as the pitch is defined by the multi-threaded tool you are using. We'll look at that example in a little bit. Then you specify the diameter that you would like, where you enter the major diameter, that's the largest diameter from peak to peak. The fit tolerance controls how tight the fit the thread will have. Setting a positive tolerance will mean the tool cuts at a slightly deeper thread. In most all practical uses, you would definitely enter a tolerance in here in order to get the thread to run smoothly. Then we'll move on to the create circle for internal threads button. This option creates the correct geometry for us to create a circle for internal threads based on the diameter that we set for the thread in this form, where we can make use of this vector to clear out the area using a pocket toolpath prior to running the threaded toolpath. We will look at this in more detail shortly. The next session is the thread type, where we can create an internal thread or an external thread. And then we can choose the thread and cut direction. We can choose a left-handed direction or a right-handed direction. 
And also we can choose whether or not we're spiraling down or up while we cut our threads. Now these next two sections we'll cover later on in this video. For now, let's go ahead and get on with creating our first example. In our first example, I have a series of four eight millimeter holes that I'm gonna use an M8 threaded tool to create M8 threaded holes. I'm gonna select these four vectors, but it's important to understand that these vectors are here purely for location purposes only. The toolpath will find the center of these vectors and then use the diameter that we specify in our thread definition to go ahead and create the threads. So let's go over here now and look at our thread milling toolpath form. So our start depth is gonna be at zero. Before we go any farther, I'm gonna go ahead and choose my tool. So let's go down here and click select. And we're gonna choose the M8 multi-threaded tool. And then we're gonna take a look at our tool set up here. Here we can see all the relevant information about the tool itself. So we're working with a six millimeter diameter where each tooth is at 60 degrees. Your tool provider will be able to give you all the correct values for the fields that you see here, including pitch, tooth size, the offset, and the thread length. We can see the thread length here is at 15 millimeters. So that's the maximum thread length that we can go to. If we exceed this in the cutting depth section of the form, then the software will inform us upon calculating the toolpath, prompting us to enter a safer, more suitable maximum depth. With regards to the pass depth, it's important that you remember that the pass depth for thread milling refers to the sideways passes the tool has to make to reach the full thread depth required. This has nothing to do with the vertical depth, as you will see in all the other tool pass strategies. For this particular tool, the pass depth is set according to the tooth size. It's important that your tool geometry and your cutting parameters are set up properly in your software. And also, you should always take a look and ensure that your feeds and speeds are set up so they're safe and appropriate for the material you're cutting into in your CNC machine. Now let's go ahead and select this tool. In this next field here, we can go ahead and choose or place our maximum depth in here. And as we change that number, so if we put a five in here, you'll see that our thread length changes as well, depending on what we put in here. So this maximum depth cannot be any deeper than what we have in our tool definition. And so if you forget what that is, it's always good to go check your tool to make sure. And if not, when you go to calculate your tool path, then the software will warn you that you've chosen a number that's not appropriate for this particular tool and you need to go in and fix that. So for right now, we'll change our max depth to be 10 millimeters. And you'll notice that our thread length is less than our max depth every time. And that's because the thread length is the number of full threads or loops that will fit into the maximum depth. This will always be less than the maximum depth, seeing as it takes into account the lead in and also the base of the tool. We've already selected our tool already, but if we wanted to make any temporary edits for this tool path, we could go ahead and click that here, but that's okay. So we'll just click cancel. In our thread definition section, we can't choose a pitch preset because that all comes from our multi-threaded tool and same with the pitch, it's grayed out, that's been defined in our multi-threaded tool. The diameter is actually the hole that we're gonna create. So we're gonna make that eight millimeters because we want this to fit an M8 threaded insert. Fit tolerance. So this controls how tight a fit your threads will have. Setting a positive tolerance will mean the tool cuts a slightly deeper thread we should add a slight tolerance in order to get the thread to run smoothly. Running a series of tests will help you find the sweet spot. This is similar to the concept of applying allowances to slot together parts or inlays. Seeing as this is just a demonstration, we're gonna set this to zero for now, but it's important that you know you have this option to use in a real world application. Now we can see here that to create circles for internal threads is grayed out. That's because we've chosen the thread type to be external as soon as we go ahead and choose internal, you'll see that we now have access to this button. Okay, now we're gonna create our circles for internal threads. Now what's gonna happen when we click this button, the software will go ahead and create us some internal circles inside of these circles that are already selected using an offset. And that offset will be calculated based on the tool that we're using so that we can be assured that once we pocket out these internal circles, our multi-threaded tool can fit in there and do its work to establish those threads. So we'll go ahead and click that and you'll see there they are right there, there's four of them. Now we're gonna go ahead and off-click everything and we'll hold down our shift key and we're gonna select 
those internal circles. Then we're going to right click on those and we're going to move those to their own layer, to a brand new layer. And we're going to call this pockets. And we'll give it a color so we can tell what's going on here. And then we'll just click OK. And then we're going to off click those and we'll go back and we'll reselect the original outside vectors. And we'll come back to those blue vectors in a minute with our pocketing toolpath. Now we've already told it we're going to make internal threads, so that's perfectly fine. We're going to make left-handed threads, so it's be the thread direction will be left-handed. That way, when we turn in a M8 insert, then we'll end up turning it anti-clockwise, and then we're going to go from top to bottom. We can just go ahead and calculate that. Just like any other toolpath, we'll be brought directly into our preview toolpath dialog, where we can go ahead and preview these toolpaths and make sure they look okay before we run them on, on our machine. But for now, we're gonna close this down and we're gonna go back to our 2D, 2D view for a moment and we are gonna create our pocket toolpaths. So let's go ahead and create a pocket toolpath. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna go to our layers manager here and we're gonna double click on this little page right in front of the words pockets and that will select all of our vectors that are on that layer and also make that layer active. We're going to remove these, or we're going to set a cut depth, excuse me, of 10. And we're going to remove these two tools out of there. And then we're going to select a brand new tool. And it's going to be a six millimeter end mill. We're just going to, head, we're just going to go ahead with those settings. We'll select that. We're going to use offset tooling. And we're just going to call that pocket. And then we can calculate that. And now what we're going to do is reorganize our list of tool paths here. Because we do want to run the pocket tool path first. So we're just going to push that to the top. And then we can preview that visible toolpath. And you see there we have those pockets are cut out with that six millimeter end mill. Okay, let's select the thread toolpath and let's go ahead and preview that selected toolpath. And now our software can't render that toolpath type in the way that it would look in the real world. So let's go ahead and have a look at a short video that will describe all the different options that we have here at the bottom of our thread milling toolpath with regards to th thread direction and cut direction. In this first example, we're going to have a left-handed thread direction from top to bottom. And you'll see because this is a multi-threaded tool, it does it quite efficiently. In the second hole, we're going to be doing a right-handed thread from top to bottom. In the third hole, we're going to be going left-handed from the bottom to the top. And then this last hole will be right-handed from the bottom to the top. So I hope that that video helped you better understand what's happening right here when you choose your thread directions and your cut directions. Now let's go ahead and close this down. And we're done with this example, so we're going to go up to File, and then we're going to click Save. And let's bring back up our tabs here, and we'll pin that down. And then we're going to go File, Close, and we're going to open up an existing file for our next example, and that's going to be Thread Milling Guide Example Number 2. So let's just click that, and we're going to choose Open. Okay, as soon as the file loads in, we can look down here in the bottom left-hand corner of our software and we're going to see the dimensions are now in inches opposed to our last example which was in millimeters. The width of our job is 10 inches, the height is 4, and our material thickness is 1.6 inches. Now each one of these four circles that we see here in our job space are an inch and a quarter in width and height so they're perfectly round and we can go ahead now and select all of those and jump right over into our toolpath tab. Now straight away, we're going to go in and start to, to set up our thread milling toolpath. So let's click on that. We're going to start at the top and work our way down. So our first thing we need to sort out is our start depth. So that we're going to set that at zero at the very top of our material. And then we have to define our maximum cut depth. To do that, we're going to do the same thing as we did in our last example is go ahead and choose our tool first. So let's select our tool. And we're going to choose this 60 degree, three quarter inch single threaded tool. And over here in our geometry settings and our cut parameters, these are set up to the manufacturer settings of our actual cutter we're going to be using. 
So make sure you set this up based on your tool that you have on hand. But for us, the diameter is three quarters of an inch. The angle is 60 degrees. The important one over here is our neck length, which is our maximum cut depth that we can do, which is an inch and a half. And then of course, here is our pass depth. And that's again, a left to right pass depth that tells us how far our tool can go inside of our material, either left or to the right. And then our feeds and speeds are set and they're safe and appropriate for our machine. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. So as we saw a minute ago, our maximum cut depth was one and a half inches. So I'm gonna choose 0.7 inches. I think that'll be enough for this particular demonstration. Now you'll notice that our thread length is zero. So obviously there's a mistake somewhere along here that we need to sort out. And we'll do that in just a second under our thread definition. Now, now we can go ahead and we can select a pitch preset from our list. So at the very top of this list, we have our metric tools or metric measurements. And at the bottom, we have our imperial tools at the very bottom. Okay, so you can go ahead and choose one out of the list if you'd like to, and you'll see that everything will get populated properly. And then we now have a thread length at the top. Now we can also go in and we can set our pitch manually if we'd like to. So we could put in 0.02 of an inch, and you'll see that again, our thread length is updated appropriately. But in our case, we are gonna make our pitch equal to 1 8 of an inch. And again, you'll see that with that, it's, it is a possible thread pitch for this tool because we have a thread length now of 0.5 of an inch, which is great. We're gonna leave our diameter set to 1.25 because that is the diameter of our hole that we have here or our circle that we have here. And of course we could go ahead and add in a fit tolerance if we want to, but we don't need to for this particular demonstration. So we're not gonna do that. We're creating internal threads. So now this create circles for internal threads is available to us. Let's just go ahead and click that because we are gonna need to create a pocket so we can remove that material from the inside of the hole so we can safely plunge in with our thread milling tool. Let's do the same thing as we did in our last demonstration. We're gonna select all of those and we'll right click on them and we're gonna move those to a new layer and we'll call this layer pockets. And we'll give it a color and we'll click OK. And then we'll off click that and we'll go back and reselect our original vectors again. We're gonna choose a left-handed thread direction and we're gonna cut from the top to the bottom and we're gonna go ahead and calculate that toolpath. Okay, let's go ahead and preview that toolpath. No, and like before, we're not gonna preview our toolpaths. So we're gonna close this down and we're gonna go back and create our pocket toolpath. So let's go ahead and tile our views, go to our layers manager here, double click on the pockets layer, and that will go ahead and select all the vectors that are on that layer. And then we can go over here and create our pocket toolpath. In this case, the start depth is gonna be zero and our cut depth is gonna be slightly more than our maximum cut depth of our tool. That way we'll, we'll, we'll make room at the bottom so that our threaded insert won't bottom out when we twist it in. So we're gonna make this 0.75 of an inch. We're going to go ahead and remove this tool here. We'll leave the quarter inch end mill in there. We do offset tooling and we're gonna just call this pocket and we can calculate that. Okay, now we need to reorganize this like we did before. We're gonna pop the pocket toolpath to the top. We are gonna go ahead and preview that toolpath very quickly so we can see what's going on. That just pocketed out those holes for us. And now let's go ahead and preview our thread toolpath here. Before we do that though, let's have a quick look at this actual toolpath preview we have here so we can see what's going on with this spiral that we see here. So let's maximize our view and let's just zoom in on one of these. Now to help us see this just a little bit better, we're gonna go up here to view and we are going to turn off our color shaded view. And we just need to relook at our spiral again. So you're gonna see what's happening here. Let me help you understand what's happening here. The tool is gonna to plunge down. It's gonna move out and start to go down to the start depth. And then there's this circle here at the very top. It's gonna to do a quick chamfer around the top of the actual hole. And what that will do is it'll help to create a nice seat for when we 
screw in our threaded insert. And it's also gonna make sure that our, if there's any chipping that happens with our first tooth, it will be minimized, okay? And then it's slowly gonna go down and work its way down in this nice helical fashion to the bottom. And then it's gonna retract back to the center of our pocket and then pull out of the hole straight out, okay? Turn back on our color shaded view Let's, let's tile our views again. It looks straight down on this view and let's preview that tool thing and you'll see what happens. Now again, not much to see here because we really can't show this tool path in our software the way it would look in the real world. So we have another video for you to look at to help explain all those different options that we see down here in the thread direction and cut direction part of our thread milling tool path form. Here's our first example of a single threaded tool cutting a right-handed thread from top to bottom. And here we have the uh, same tool doing a left-handed thread from top to bottom. And then we have a left-handed thread from the bottom to the top. And then we have a right-handed thread from bottom to top. And you can see the comparison between the two multi-threaded tools and single-threaded tools where this would take a bit more time than a multi-threaded tool would. So hopefully that video helped to clear up maybe any questions you had about those different operations there. Okay, for now, let's just close down that tool path and go up and save this file off. So you can have a look at it later. Now let's go ahead and move on to our last and final example by opening up a brand new file again, navigating over to our tutorials folder and finding a thread milling guide example number three. And let's open that up. So the object of this example is to create a real world wooden screw or wooden bolt and a wooden nut so that we can show you how these two pieces will fit together nice and snug. Um, so down here in our bottom left-hand corner, we have some real-world measurements from a piece of material that we have in the labs, which is 10 inches by 10 inches, and the thickness is 1.612. I believe it's a piece of countertop that we'll be using, so that's why there's kind of a strange measurement there. In the center of our job space, we have two circles. Each one of these circles measures one and a quarter inch uh, in diameter across the center. Uh, this one over here we'll be using for our actual bolt and this one we'll be using for our nut. So this will be an external thread and this will be an internal thread. Okay. And we'll just pop over to our tooling to get started with this. So as always, we are going to check our material setup to make sure everything is set up safe and appropriate for our machine. Um, so we have a thickness of 1.612. Our datum is going to be in our lower left hand corner of our job. We'll be machining off our material surface and our rapid Z gaps and home start position are set up and they're safe and appropriate for our machine. So let's just go ahead and click OK. So with this circle selected, let's go ahead and start to create our actual bolt. So we're going to choose our thread milling tool path. So for this bolt, our start depth is going to be zero. So we're going to start right at the very top of our material and we are going to go down a thread depth uh, 0.7. Now this number comes from our actual tool that we're using. So let's have a look at that tool. If we choose select, these are numbers that came right off our tool that we have in our labs. So they've changed from the first two examples in our video so far. So just wanted to point that out so you wouldn't be confused. Feeds and speeds have all been corrected. So again, for you, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your tool is set up properly. And again, your feeds and speeds are safe and appropriate for your machine, the cutter you're using and the material you're cutting into. But for us, this is perfectly fine. And the neck length here is 0.75 of an inch. You'll see that I've chosen a maximum cut depth that's a little bit less than that. So that's pretty safe for us. So we're gonna go ahead and choose select. Notice the thread length here is 0.5 of an inch. So we're like in our previous example, we don't go all the way down to our maximum depth because this thread length has been calculated based on the shape of our tool, especially the end of our tool. Okay, so that's just something to keep in mind. Now you noticed here that we've got defined here an internal thread. So actually this should be an external thread, okay? 
And we have a pitch of 0.125 and a diameter of 1.25. And this diameter comes from the actual dimension of our circle. Like we had mentioned before, this circle does not define what the diameter of the hole is going to be. That's set here. This just tells the software where the center of it should be. For us, we've drawn, drawn these to scale so that we can see exactly what they're going to look like. Uh, and it just makes it a little bit easier in the end to visualize everything before you get started. Now, currently right now, there is no fit tolerance. Now, at this point, it's probably good to point out that if I had chose a custom preset here, any of these, then we'll put in a fit tolerance for you. And again, this fit tolerance is so that um, we will go in a little bit deeper into the side of um, the shaft of our bolt here to make these threads a little bit larger so that we get a nice and smooth twisting action when we slide these in together. Um, and we've set them up for you or what we think might be a good one to start with. As always, you might want to try some different sizes to test them out to make sure you get the right what's right for you. But for us, we're going to go back to one, two, five, and we're going to change our fit tolerance in this case to zero, zero, nine. And that seems to work fine for us. Again, we've chosen an external thread and we are going to choose a direction of right handed top to bottom. Now, again, we need to reflect this in the nut that we will be creating. So let's make sure that we remember that. So it's right handed from top to bottom. And we'll just call this thread external. And we're going to calculate that. And there we have it. So this is going to be a raised post in the middle of this material block. Uh, and it's pretty obvious that if we try to cut this right now, then we'll be plunging right into the surface of this material. And we really don't want to do that. That wouldn't be good for our tool um, and it wouldn't be very safe at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to pocket out an area around this post so that we can go ahead and drop in our tool and make those threads on there without having any material in our way. Now, because we have to do this, it gives us an opportunity to make one other small adjustment to our bolt. And that is to actually make the shaft a little bit thinner, not the same diameter as what we had originally defined, just by a slight bit. Again, this is so that when we go ahead and twist in our um, our bolt into our nut, we'll get a nice smooth turning action. Now also what will happen is we'll end up cutting off the ends of the threads or the ends of the threads, the actual pointy parts of the threads won't have an actual chance to be cut sharp because that material will be missing. And so if we go back to our tool path just for a second, we're, we're going to end up actually removing or not having the material on the tips of these points here when we go to put in our threads. Um, and again, that will just make it so that we'll get a nice uh, smooth action when we're twisting in this uh, bolt into the nut. So let's just close this down and let's think about that for a second. So if we go back to our 2D view for a moment and we hide our toolpath, and we zoom into this vector. We're going to look at our layer manager here for a second and drop this down. And we have some other extra layers made up here for us. And then what we want to look at is this pocket external. So let's go ahead and turn that on. And you see we've already pre-made a box for us. Now the distance between the outside of this box and our actual shaft we're going to have left behind is larger than the diameter of our tool that we're going to be plunging in there. So that's important if you want to recreate this and you're going to be using a larger tool, then you're going to want to make sure that you have enough distance to get that tool in there without any problems at all. You don't want it hitting the sides of this on its way in. Um, so we're going to select that and we're going to make it our active layer so that when we offset this in a little bit, this original circle in a little bit, then um, it'll land on the proper layer. So let's go ahead and off click there. Let's select that again and we'll bring out our drawing tab and we're going to do a quick little offset here. Now again, we're going to offset this inwards just a slight little bit. Okay. And this slight little bit will make it so that the ends of our threads won't come to a point. They'll be blunt and also the shaft, the remaining bit that isn't going to be touched um, by the 
thread milling cutter uh, will be a little bit smaller than the hole that we're going to create and it will be easier to fit into. So we're going to go ahead and offset that inwards and we'll go ahead and select that and we'll close that down. Now we're going to choose that new line that we created holding down our shift key. We'll grab this outside one and we're going to go ahead and create our pocket. Now our start depth of our pocket is going to be at zero and we're going to go down the same depth as we had put in as our thread depth for our thread milling tool. We're going to use a quarter inch end mill so we can remove that one eighth out of there. It's going to be a basic um, offset tooling and we're going to go ahead and just call this pocket dash external and we can calculate that and there we have it. So as before, we're going to need to cut this toolpath first before our thread tooling. So let's slide it to the top and let's go ahead and preview that visible toolpath. There we have it. So we have the shaft left behind and this removes a slight bit of extra material from the shaft than what we had when we, from the diameter that we told our thread toolpath that we had there. Okay. So we removed a little bit of extra material away from the shaft that our thread milling toolpath thinks is there. So we can go ahead and turn on our thread toolpath and we can preview that visible toolpath and you'll see what happens. It goes down and removes that. Now if we go ahead and look straight down on this, let's go ahead and tile our views left and right and we'll zoom in a little bit. If we go ahead and bring up this toolpath, you'll see that the vector that we use to create that toolpath with is now selected in our 2D view. And if we go ahead and turn on our solid preview and close this down and look at our, you'll see that we're still cutting those threads into that shaft. But remember, the shaft is this diameter, not this diameter, so it's slightly smaller. And we should get a nice fitting bolt. Okay, so that's that. Let's go ahead and maximize our 2D view. Let's press F on our keyboard so we can see everything. Let's turn off our solid preview there and let's hide that toolpath. And let's go ahead and have a look at making the actual hole that we need or the, th the threaded hole that we need to twist this bolt head into. So let's select that and go back to our thread milling toolpath. Now our start depth um, in this case will not be at zero. We want our bolt to twist in so it's nice and snug, but we know that we have a, a little bit of material left on the top or the, the bottom of our shaft that hasn't been touched. And that's the difference between the maximum depth and the actual thread length. And that's point two. So to accommodate that, we're going to make our start depth at point two of an inch. We need to tell our software because our thread length has now changed that our maximum thread length is going to be 0.9 and you'll see that now our thread length has gone back to half an inch. So we're going to go down into this hole 0.2 of an inch before we start making our threads and our thread length will be a half an inch still like before. We're going to choose that same tool. We're going to use these same settings here except we're going to remove the fit tolerance. We're going to put that back to zero. We're making an internal thread. So that means we need to create that circle for the internal threads so that we can pocket out the center of this hole. So let's create that. We're going to use the same thread direction that we have down here, and we're going to call this thread dash internal, and we'll calculate that. So before we go ahead and uh, preview our tooling for that one, we need to keep in mind that we're going to need to pocket out the center of the hole. And that also we're going to need to accommodate for that shoulder that we have at the top of our bolt. So let's go ahead now and look straight down on this. Let's tile our views for a second and let's think about that for just a minute. So as we know, we've created this internal circle here for use to pocket out the center of our bolt hole. But we're going to need to use this original vector to pocket out that 0.2 of an inch deep. So let's start off with that one, mainly because it's already selected. So let's go ahead to our pocket toolpath and let's do a start depth of 0.2 of an inch. And we're going to go down a cut depth of zero. So that's just going to make us a little bit of a, of a shoulder there for us. We're going to remove this 1 8 inch end mill out of there. So we'll remove that out of there. Offset tooling. This is all great. Great. So we're just going to pocket and we're going to call this drop. Okay, so that's going to be that little tiny drop we're going to create and we'll calculate that. Okay, so we can preview that visible toolpath. Well, actually, we should move it up one spot. Let's preview that visible toolpath because we're going to want to cut it first. Okay, let's close that down. 
Now let's go ahead and choose this internal circle and this pocket again. In this case, we want to have a start depth of 0.2 and we want to go down to make our hole one inch deep. So we're going to choose to cut down 0.8 of an inch. So 0.8 plus 0.2 is going to give me the one inch that I need. I can remove out this end mill, this one eighth inch end mill again. We're going to offset that and we're going to call this pocket internal and we'll calculate that. And then we can preview that visible toolpath. And you'll see there we have that little bit of a shoulder there that'll allow for that 0.2 of an inch difference from our maximum thread length to our real thread length. And then we can go ahead now and view our thread internal. But again, we want to move this up to the right order. So we're going to do the pocket drop first, then the pocket internal, and then we're going to go ahead and preview our or send to our machine the thread internal, but we're going to preview it here. Here we are. So there we have it in the end. Now the last step we need to do is actually consider cutting these out. So we need to cut out a top for the shape of, or the a shape for the top of our bolt, and we need to cut out a shape for the nut. Now this won't be a true nut. We're not going to cut all the way through this. Obviously, you can see that. Um, so it's just going to be a cap for the end of this bolt in the end. But that's okay. And to do that, we have up here in our layers manager a. Let's zoom out a bit so you can see it here. Turn that off. We have a cut external, so they're going to make a round head on the top of our bolt. And then we're going to create this uh, square shaped nut, if you will. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's close this down and we're going to create, we're going to select those two vectors and we're going to create a quick profile cut. We're going to have a start depth of zero. We're going to down our full thickness of our material. And because it's a weird thickness, if we forget what that is, we can just put in a Z and then press equals and our software will find that for us. We're going to use a quarter inch end mill. We're going to cut outside those lines. We're not going to use ramp or plunge moves. We will add in some tabs and the software has put them where they should be. So I'm going to leave them where they are. These dimensions seem just about right. And we can just call this cut out. And we'll go calculate. And then we can preview that visible tool path. Let's maximize our view. And there we have the end result. So we have our bolt with the threaded top on it and then our nut with the threaded internals. Now the thing is with our software, as you already know, we can't really visualize this type of tooling very well. So we're gonna go ahead and show you this part being cut on our CNC machine right in the labs. Okay, to start off here, you can see that we have pocketed out around the shaft that we created for the external threads that we're going to create or the bolt that we're going to create. And here we go, cutting those threads in there. And we left enough clearance, as I mentioned earlier, in that pocket for our bit to fit in there nicely and safely. And this, you can see us cutting the internal threads, but you'll see that we did that drop down, that 0.2 of an inch drop down so that we could get that nice snug fit. And there we have our end result for the bolt. And you'll see that when Becky goes ahead and turns this into the threaded insert that we've made, that it fits in there nice and snug and comes out nice and smoothly. So that's a perfect job and that worked out really, really well. Hope that video helped for you to better visualize what's going to be happening when you send these tool paths off to your machine. So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to go up and save this file off. So we're going to go file, save as, and we'll save it off in your tutorials folder. And we'll just call it thread milling guide example number three tool paths. So you can load this in and have a look if you'd like to later on to see what we did. So let's save that off and we're going to replace that. And that's perfect. So now we're going to go over a couple extra features of the thread milling toolpath. We'll go up to file and then we're going to close this down and we're going to open up an existing file. We're going to go back to that first file that we had opened up. So let's click open. Again, let's go ahead and flip over to our toolpaths tab and have a look at this thread milling toolpath. So at the very bottom here, there are two sections that we haven't talked about yet. There's use vector selection order, and then there's using the vector selector here. So the first one we'll look at is using the vector selection order. With, with this unselected, the software will go ahead and automatically choose the order at which it will cut these thread milling holes or posts in. 
Um, and like a lot of our other tool paths, you can go ahead and tell it whichever order you would like it to do them in just by selecting your vectors in the order that you want them to be used in. So to demonstrate how this is going to work, we're going to go up to our pockets tool path and we're going to turn off those internal circles. Then we're going to grab all of these and we're just going to select them and holding down our control key, we'll make a copy here. And then we'll hold down our control key and we'll make a copy down here. And then we're going to go ahead and select all of those and just recalculate this tool path. So you see the software has decided that the best way to cut these vectors is to go in from my start point and do this kind of a order which is perfectly fine or maybe perfectly fine. But what if I want to go ahead and tell the software I would like it to cut these in a very particular order. So to do that, I can use this use vector selection order. So let's pop back to our 2D tool path again, or back to our 2D view again, excuse me. And we're going to turn this on. We'll deselect everything. And we're just going to go ahead and select by holding down our shift key, this order one at a time. And now we can go ahead and calculate our toolpath and you'll see that the software has respected the order that I chose those circles in to give me this shape of a toolpath or this path for my tooling, which is great. So let's close this down and let's take a look at that toolpath again. Now the final part is the automatic, automatic vector selector. So we can use that if we'd like to. And again, we go over this in depth in a lot of our other tutorials, but for now, just a sort of brief overview, you can decide or you can tell the software how to automatically select vectors, either open vectors or closed vectors, and what layers they may fall on. And then you can go ahead and swap out those vectors on that layer. It'll automatically generate the tooling based on those new vectors. Again, we go over this in greater detail in other tutorials, but that just gives you an idea that you have that option in this tool path strategy as well. So let's close this down and close this down. Now, if you're looking for information on how to save off any of the tool paths from these three examples that we've given you, then you can just go ahead and have a look through our tool path savings guide. And I'll link that below in the related video section. And with all that now, that ends our thread milling guide. And I hope that you go out there and you use it to create some pretty neat and interesting projects.